Playground. Hooray! What you don't know can hurt you. Would you have voted to certify the 2020 election? Would you have voted for Biden's massive infrastructure bill? Would you have voted to stop construction of President Trump's wall? You didn't know Senator Grassley was going to vote that way, but he did. I won't run as a Republican and vote like a liberal. I'd appreciate your vote in the June 7th primary. I'm Jim Carlin, candidate for U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Paid for by Carlin for U.S. Senate. Find us. Welcome to episode eight of the SBK show. I'm your host, SBK, So Brother Kevin from SoBrotherKevin.com. I thank you for your continued support. Episode eight brought about some unique challenges. Yes, that is why this episode is late. If you are receiving it now, I hope you are receiving it well and receiving it in peace. So I'll just tell you this was planning to record the show and there were some other things that came up life calls sometimes when you're in the middle of plans and you have to take action sometimes those actions involved evasive maneuvers Mm -hmm. so being that i keep my head on a swivel i was able to make the necessary arrangements to give you the following episode I don't know if this working. I don't know how this going to sound, but this is what we working with. And that shall work with what thou is working with. Something like that. Thou shall worketh with what thou has been uh, given to be worketh with. Or thou shall worketh with what thou is working with. Close enough. All right. Due to some circumstances beyond my control, can't really control anything. You know, it's a weird thing about control. They say that until you lose it, you don't realize how little of it you had to begin with. I'm recording from a remote setup. I am driving down the street. Probably won't get to the reasons why I'm doing this episode on a remote not a remote thing it's one of those zoom h5 recorders it probably up to the h7 or h8 right now and this is the first time i've really used this thing i bought it new because i thought i wanted to do some mobile recording but then i'd always get in the car and forget it or either i would just um yeah i basically would have it in storage or something i just forgot a hat damn thing and now that a lot of times i'm in the car you would think i'd have some sort of mobile setup that sounded really good for a podcast or whatever seeing as that i pretty much talk for a living or for a dying no matter how you slice it uh should be up to speed on all types of technology and stuff like that experiment with the idea of doing 30 minute episodes i don't know how long this episode is going to be i never know how long any episode is going to be i just kind of keep going until i feel like well that's about enough i've had enough of me may need to look at the analytics and see how many people or not how many people are listening how long people are listening and then i'll look and see where i should be what's the sweet spot because if you're doing an hour podcast and everybody's listening for about 30 minutes or 35 minutes maybe you should do a 30 minute podcast and then you'll get most of everybody because the people that listen over 30 ha they listen for 30 minutes too i was in walmart today and i saw this dude walk in older guy he walked in he had a big ass stick a huge stick like Almost a staff, if you will. Who's the dude? Voldemort? Who's the dude from Lord of the Rings? Who's the guy with the white beard and the hat like a wizard? It was a staff. This thing had to be about five feet. It was taller than five feet. Because I'm five seven, And this thing wasn't seven inches taller than me. And the guy looked like he was about my height. And he had the staff. He had it was a staff. It wasn't a walking stick. And it was thick too. This thing was girthy. And I was just thinking, does he get away with walking into Walmart with this big ass stick? Cause he an old dude. I'ma tell you right now. I just know it. And I'm just telling you. I wouldn't feel like I looked right. And I know I wouldn't look right walking in Walmart with a big ass staff. I'm talking like this thing was thick. How can how thick can I? What can I relate it to? Other than like a staff you would see somebody walking with. 
And so if he was walking with it, he would have his hand on it and it would still be like taller than his head. This thing was tall. This was a tall ass stick. I don't know, man. I think we let old people get away with too much stuff in general. But I mean, maybe that's what we're supposed to do. Maybe we're supposed to take it easy and take it slow with old people so they can um, betroth us with knowledge if you want to be betrothed. But nevertheless, I'm pulling in the Shell station and get me some gas. I go to Shell. I'm not particular about gas, and I never really look to see how much gas is a gallon. I just go get gas if I need it. It's not negotiable. But I do have this Shell's reward card. So this is uh, Shell regular gas as of right this second is $3.25. I'm going to put my little code in there, and it should knock $0.05 cent off, so I'll be getting it for like three twenty. See if I can pause this thing, get gas, and come back. Yeah, just as I thought, gas is uh, three twenty with this five cent discount with that Shell uh, rewards card. You know that thing used to be like up to twenty five cent off. Sometimes I get ten cent. Sometimes I get fifteen cent. Sometimes I get twenty five cent off if you get a fill up. Or I don't know what the point number goal was you had to hit to get the maximum bonus. But when the pandemic hit and all the prices on everything went up, they stopped giving you that 25 cent off at the shell. And now you got a five cent off if you're lucky. Hmm. Maybe I would have been better off if I really counted with my counting pennies or if I it like, you know, went for discounts like that. Like uh, one side of the street, the gas is 325. The other side is 320. I'm usually not going to go over to the other side of the street. Or like my mother, she only gets her gas at Sam's because she gets this discount card with Sam's. Okay. But Sam's on the other side of town. I'm not going to the other side of town just because it's got the cheapest gas. When you had to drive all the way around now. Maybe I'd be better off if I thought like that. I never thought like that on anything. And like in general, I'm looking for the best deal. If I go to like get a TV or if I'm shopping for something, yeah, I'm looking for the best deal. Not on like everything. I don't do coupons. I guess I'll only take advantage of discounts if they're convenient. If they're not convenient, then I feel like I might be just wasting time. And if I'm wasting time to save a few pennies, that's not going to make me feel better. That's like if you're driving down the street and you know a shortcut. Man, usually them shortcuts take longer than just waiting in traffic. But you're moving, so you think you're getting a better deal. But really, you went out of your way, burnt more gas, and it probably took more time. But you didn't care because you was moving. Yeah. I went back to Tampa, I had a doctor's appointment one week ago in Tampa. What was it, two weeks ago? I don't know. But the last episode was entitled, no, it wasn't. Man, I'm mixed up on my own episodes. This is episode eight. So episode seven, which I forgot to post social media graphics. Hmm. Ah, episode six was called Conflicted in Tampa. Yes, now I remember. Episode six was called Conflicted in Tampa, except for I didn't spell it that way. I didn't spell it conflicted. I left out the L, so it was convicted. Convicted. And shout out to the person on Facebook who I seriously doubt listens to the podcast. They just saw it in the feed and they saw that the graphic was spelled wrong, that I spelled conflicted without an L, so it was convicted. And they just put, hey, what the hell is convicted? And I said, it's the way I misspell conflicted. Thanks. But I didn't say thanks for listening because what I've noticed is that most of the people who listen, well, hold on. Most of the people that listen won't interact with you other than downloading the episode. There's a lot of people that interact with you, but they don't listen to the episode. So when I put up those things prompting people to call the show, which I need to do a better job of putting more of those out. A lot of people like the post, but they don't call. Well, post is a call to action. So if you're liking the post... You might as well not like the post unless liking the post gets it seen by more people. If so, then don't listen to me. 
But if you are listening to me, I just appreciate it. I appreciate people's that answer answer call to actions. Um, it's kind of crazy. So conflicted in Tampa was episode six. Then there was episode seven. Um, my phone's ringing. Hold on. This is a debacle. Um, we interrupt this episode as it was interrupted, and this is old men talking. Oh well, I had to go get some gas. And oh, stuff. that's what it so, was. Yeah, yeah. So. John, let him show you around town. <laughs> yeah. I told I take him wherever he want to go. Wherever he want to go. Yeah, there yeah. Go. That's right. I gotta look out for him. There, there you go. Go yeah. him go way back. Yeah, that's what he told me. Oh man, <laughs> hey, you be surprised when he used to call up. I was booped and he was two. <laughs> That's exactly what he told. Watch that, yo. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's good. We go way, way back. Yeah, have some fun on this here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, have some fun on Hold this. On, let me grab my, my thing on the seat. Yeah, all right. right. I got to go around the park in there. Mm-hmm. Going in and get my paper. Let's pay for that thing. Yeah. Let me get it off. But well, take care of him. All right, take it easy. Take care, man. Anything you need, man. Like I said, John, don't get no work. I'll be wearing your phone out, but don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I told him I'd be calling all the time. Yeah, call and check him. He, he know yeah. it. He know it. Yeah. I showed him the uh, yearbook. Uh-huh. Uh, yearbook. Uh-huh. And your uh, sister. In it? Uh, well, you sound that growling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you about to, <laughs> you about to eat up something. Ooh, man, what you talking about, man? Yeah. You know what you call one of my classmates down? Oh, I need Nora. Nora, yeah. Nora, yeah. What's up, Nora? Once again, we continue to interrupt this episode with another interruption during the interruption. This is SBK Sports with Pops. I don't even call my dad Pops. That's what I see it. Yeah. How did it go? Well, I went and got some gas and so I'm sitting out here. Hey, I did bring you some ice cream sandwich. Oh, you did? Mm hmm. Uh, you can take your mask off if you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the first time you've been anywhere, really. That wasn't a doctor's appointment or going to the store. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. All glad to see me. Yeah? That's good. Turn down. Which way? Turn down. I know when all these houses right here was built. You know where you're at? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Krispy Kreme uh, donut place I used to be right there. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh you do? Yeah. <laughs> you don't think I remember that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see a lot of people talking about how Antonio Brown got suspended for three games and Aaron Rodgers. They basically did the same thing. I don't think Aaron Rodgers got suspended, did he? Mm-mm. Well, they both lied about being vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, they both. Once, one just, he said it misled you with words. The other one had a fake card. At the same, it's the same thing. One get three games, one doesn't get any. Who had, uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers lied, I know. He lied. He just said they asked him if he was vaccinated, and he answered with, I've, I've been immunized. And then they found out he lied, that he did not get the vaccine, and they didn't they didn't suspend him. But Antonio Brown, they asked him if he was immunized. I mean, if he was vaccinated, he said yes, and here's the proof, and gave him a fake a card. It was a real card, but it wasn't his card. He paid somebody. Or somebody, somebody paid somebody. To go get a card with the vaccine on there, and they put his name on the card. Mm. To me, that's the same thing. Uh, his line about 
your vaccination status, which is what that's what they were both trying to dodge it. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them had a vaccine. One got three games, one got no games. What you think? That's not that's not right. <laughs> it sure is. You think it's the same thing, or you think it's different because Antonio Brown showed him a fake card? What Brown did is just as bad, just as bad as what uh, what Rogers did and Brown did equally. Well, they didn't get the same punishment. That's definite. That's what everybody been talking about. But then you also have a situation where, if you think about it, Bucks definitely in playoff contention. And I think Green Bay is too. But Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I, I think that he's more of a high-profile player. Oh, well, no, it's definitely some favoritism. I'm, I'm saying it's because Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback. And Antonio Brown is a perceived troublemaker. Yeah. But this is what I never liked about the NFL. You have to dole out the punishments equally and evenly. Especially when it's something so clear cut as they both lied. Yeah, that I don't know what's going on with that family dollar. It's open some days, it's closed some days, but today, around four o'clock, it's closed. That's prime time when they're supposed to be open. Yeah. I think they're having some staffing issues. I do too. Because every time I go in there, I see a new group of people working. And now, if you go up here, and I don't like this Dollar General up here because you. They're only going to have one register open, and it's always a line. Sometimes when I walk in there, I'll turn around as soon as I walk in when I see how long the line is. Oh, do you? Yeah, it'll be quicker to go somewhere else. They never open another register, and the place just, there's all kind of bombs out there, and people begging for money. It's just, it's, sometimes it's like five or six people crowding the door. You got to dash through them to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That place is always packed, and it always looked like a like like a place been ransacked, mm -hmm. dirty stuff all on the floor, and not where it's supposed to be. See, look, look at all the people outside that store. There's a whole bunch of them. I right just, yeah, the Dollar General. There's about seven people standing outside, right by the door. All of them want some change. All seven of them. All uh, seven of them. Yeah. They like, want uh, uh, money? Yeah, they all want money. They show up. It's the same people every time. They they up there like it's a job. <laughs> like they had a <laughs> <It> schedule. <is. laughs> okay, one more interruption to tell you that this is the continuation of the episode. We should go back to regular scheduled programming next Monday by 6 p.m. As my intention is to drop an episode at that time. Stand by. Like I was saying, I was back in Tampa for another doctor's appointment exactly one week after I was in Tampa for another doctor's appointment. I don't know why I didn't get those appointments. Well, I tried. I tried to get those kind of uh, appointments together but it just didn't work out like that with the planning and now i had to get these appointments whenever i could get them and they happened to be a week apart couldn't do them virtually they were appointments that i had to be in person for so that's what it is now when i say i'm in tampa i'm really in st pete even though the appointments were in tampa i stay in st pete because uh that's what i like and i all the food that i like to eat is in st pete and i'm gonna be close to the food it's weird how the food really dictates some things. And eating at some of the places that I love in St. Pete kind of made me feel normal again. I ate at all my favorite places. Eleven Chicks, Zaytoons, um, Kahunas. No seafood. 
on this trip at all. Where else do I like to eat? And on 34th Street, there's a convenience store that serves breakfast. And I like to have that breakfast. Now, that was the one thing that disappointed me because the old black lady that worked in the kitchen, they must have fired her because the food wasn't tasting right. And the dude behind the counter, he was looking like he wasn't too confident in his egg skills. And the eggs was tasting funny. Anyway, they got me on that one. They got me on that one. They ran out of bacon, too. And what kind of breakfast place run out of bacon in the middle of the breaking rush? You used to go to that place because you can get yourself a decent deep fried pork chop. That's neither here nor there. They fired the old black lady. Hopefully they fired her and uh, life didn't fire her. You know what I'm saying? You never know these days. It's just, it's it's like that with the Corvette and that Omarion. That was a disappointing breakfast. I ate a little bit of it. Yes, I had the deep fried pork chop. And I regret it. Y'all ever see that movie, The Rassler? It had that one guy that was in the freaky movie with the lady. When he was doing some stuff to it with the Ice Cube, Mickey Rock. Is it Mickey Rock or Mickey O'Rock? Let's go with Mickey Rock. So Mickey Rock was in this movie called A Rassler. The synopsis of the movie, if I recall, because I did see this movie. And I think they won some things. Was this the movie where Marissa Torme was his woman? And she won Best Actress or Best or Supporting Actress for that. I think I'm on the right p- path with this. And no, I don't Google shit in the middle of the show to make sure that I have it. I, I just, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be and you can let me know or not. Or just groove with the story because there is a point. The Wrestler, Mickey Rock. What was that freaky movie though? 11 seconds, 16 minutes. I know it was some time. Man, maybe I should Google shit during the show. Well, if I did that, then you wouldn't have anything to scream at. Mickey Rock plays a retired wrestler who used to be a big deal. This is what I remember from the movie. And he wasn't handling being a ex-famous person very well. That fall from grace, man, it can take you all over the place. I don't know if he had any kind of drug problems, or alcohol problems, or problems with the, the law. I don't know if all of that was happening. But what I do remember is one scene in particular, the wrestler. He was working at a Winn-Dixie and he was the meat man, the butcher behind the counter. And he was in there doing his thing, you know, cutting up the ham hocks, putting the hog malls in the packages and making sure the, the riblets were next to the country style ribs which i'm now a fan of i'd never cooked them before meat man if you're listening one time i uh, have never done anything with country style rib but i made some not too long ago and those were the joint i mean yeah i'm back on that country style ribs if i don't get back on my dr seppi diet so mickey rock is the wrestler and he up in that when dicks is slinging that beef cutting it up and everything And he has this moment where he is preparing something for a customer. This is my loose translation. And the customer says, hey, man, I don't remember what his professional wrestling name was or what his like real name when he wasn't wrestling, when he was just like the butcher man. I don't know what none of those names were. So I'm going to have to I'm going to make up these names to protect the truth. Let's say that his name was the Mangler, right? He's doing something. He's packaging some meat, cutting up some chicken wings or something for somebody and packaging them and everything, putting a little stamp on there with the price, weighing them up on the little counter thing, a little weighting uh, scale. And this guy goes, man, you look familiar. Wait a minute. I know you anywhere. You the Mangler. And he's like, nah, I ain't the Mangler. And he goes, nah, man, I'm a big fan, bro. You the Mangler. He said, nah, bro, get on out of here. Take these chicken wings. Get on out of here. I ain't the Mangler. I might look like the mangler, but I ain't the mangler. I'm the chicken man. I'm the butcher man. I'm this is with Dixie, man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm butchering this movie. But I think it's up like that. And he ends up in the heat of the moment because he's mad and frustrated. Because I believe when the dude left, he might acknowledge that he was the mangler. And when he left, the dude that was working with him was like, yo, you the mangler. I I didn't know you was mangling. Oh man, mangle, mangle, mangle. He do the little mangle man dance, whatever it is. Mangler man, make it rock. Get so 
worked up and upset about being recognized because he's conflicted about all of that stuff, you know, disturbed by the fame like Kurt Cobain. He cuts his he cuts his fingers, blood everywhere. And he did that just so he could get up out of the situation. You know, once you bleeding all over the blade and all that kind of stuff, they got to cut the whole, they got to shut the whole thing down because of that cross contamination. And, you know, you don't want people to get the eagle eye or the, uh, the herpes, not herpes. I didn't mean to say herpes. I meant to say hepatitis. You don't want people to get that hepatitis. B or C? I don't know which one's the good one or the bad one. I think hepatitis C is the good one because c stands for cool and then the b is bad obviously so you don't want that hepatitis b that's the bad one well yeah they have to shut the whole thing down like yeah you know like that it's like if you break a glass over some ice if you're a bartender you got to put some of that blue curacao in there and get rid of all the ice because <laughs> how you gonna find the glass in the ice i once found a piece of glass it was in my mouth because when I drink glass, I'm ooh. When I drink ice and water, like if I'm at a restaurant, this happened to me at a very nice high-end restaurant in Orlando at a Christmas party with a morning show I used to be on. But you know, it's not about that. It's not about them. I'm just telling you it happened. I got a mouthful of water with ice in my mouth, and there was a piece of glass. It was the only thing in my mouth that wasn't melting. When I left over, it was just straight up glass. I just spit it out and kept on trucking because the lobster tail was coming. The reason why I'm talking about the wrestler, it was talking about being in St. Pete because doing some things in St. Pete made me feel normal. I went to a bar that I used to like to go to. They have this huge outside area, which was perfect. I went in and ordered me a beer and got me an order of boiled peanuts, Cajun style. And I sat out there in the back patio and I was by myself. There was nobody else there. And that's how I roll these days. If I go to a place, I'm not going inside any facility. I'm real skittish about ventilation and the number of people and whatever kind of particulates that's coming out of your hot breath. The Corvettes, the Omarion. I'm just saying I ain't trying to get that. So I'm still living that life. After I leave the bar that I like to have a beer, and sometimes I'd have a beer there after work when I got off the air, I'm driving down 4th Street in St. Petersburg, Florida. At the intersection of 4th Street and 34th Avenue, there's a Publix. There's a Publix on both sides of the road. If you are headed towards downtown St. Pete, the Publix that's on your right, that was my Publix. I used to go to that Publix all the time. That's why I did all my grocery shop. If you caught me on the other side of the street, man, I don't know. I don't know why you did, but sometimes you catch me over there, but not really. I like the Publix on the right. I walked in the Publix, got out of the car. I put my mask on. I might have had my mask on. I got. I put my mask on before I even got out of the car. I put the mask on because my mask, it takes me a minute to put it on the way, the way I have to put it on because... I have small ears, so the little loops don't fit around my ear. It would bend them over. I have very small ears, big face, big head, small ears. I have to take the two ear things, and they have these little tabs on them where you can make an ear size bigger or smaller. I take those tabs, and I interlock them up under my ears, and so it's around the back of my neck instead of over my ears. And now my ears aren't compromised because I have glasses on, and I have earbuds in a lot of the times. But I didn't have my earbuds in at this point. I just had my glasses on, and I had my mask on. As soon as I walk into the liquor store, oh, I didn't say that this was the liquor store. I said Publix, but this is the liquor store. I walk into the liquor store attached to the Publix and there's a guy in line, no mask, probably looks like he's in his 30s, 34. In my mind, he was 34 years old. I look at this guy. He looks at me. We lock eyes and then he goes back to his transaction. He pulls out his wallet and he's talking to got the cash register he pulls out his card he puts his card in i am standing behind him i didn't say a word 
And when he looked at me the first time, it was really quick. He finished his transaction. He's putting his card back into his wallet, putting his wallet into his back pocket. He grabs his package. He thanks the clerk. And he immediately turns to his right and looks me dead in the eye. And he goes, you're SBK. And I said, uh, yeah. And he couldn't really see the expression on my face, so I have a mask on. But my reaction, our eyes met, it said it all. He paused, and then he goes, well, I hope you're okay. And I paused, and I said, I am. Thanks. And it was awkward silence between me, the guy buying the package, and the cashier. It's like everything paused for a second. And then the guy just grabbed his bag and walked out of the store and disappeared into the night. And I know it just sounds like I walked into the liquor store. What's the big deal? The guy just turned around and recognized you. But I was back in Tampa again and I was feeling conflicted. And right then I knew exactly why Mickey Rourke cut his finger. I felt like the wrestler. So... <laughs> There's that. Now let me walk in Best Buy and return this USB Wi-Fi adapter. Because that shit don't work on my computer. Yeah, this is my second time at Best Buy today. Returning a different version of the same item. Damn Wi-Fi adapter. USB adapter for my MacBook. That was a big waste of time twice today. Shit still don't work. Let's take some calls and get out of here. Remember, you can always call me, leave a message, or you can text. The number is 407-276-0619. That's 24 hours a day. I, I would appreciate if you would leave a voicemail about whatever it is you want to talk about or comment or say. And sometimes I pick up the phone and then I'll talk to you and then I'll hang up and tell you to call right back and leave that message. But you never know. But I do appreciate it. Let it go. Uh, hi, SVK. <clears throat> Thanks for the show. Uh, I don't know why you would assume that a guy in Denver may be high. You're probably right. But he doesn't know what he's even... Versus! Bangus. Worst call ever. Well, at least you know it. Now I don't have to say it. I need a thumbs up or thumbs down on James from Denver. So do this now. In the show notes, the number's there, 407-276-0619. I don't even know why I say it as if you're going to remember it. Well, you could rewind and write it down. Or you could just go to the show notes and you'll see that the number's there. It never changes. I also tweet it out a couple times a week. So to call is to support. I really appreciate that. And I like when you give the show positive reviews. Give me five stars on iTunes or whatever platform that you're using to listen to the show on the Facebook show page. Uh, please give me a rating on there. Let's get this thing going. Appreciate the love, the support, and all of that stuff that you do. But I need a thumbs up or a thumbs down on James from Denver. A thumbs down would mean, well, I don't know if I'll stop playing his calls. I appreciate it. But a thumbs up would mean we get James from Denver on an episode to be a guest. I don't even really do guests, but I will. Thumbs up, thumbs down. James from Denver. What's up, SBK? It's Juancho from Denver. I just had a question. I know uh, your girl is Puerto Rican, and I want to know when the CD. Wait a minute. This is Winchell from Denver. Did you hear this call? Let me run it back. What's up, SBK? It's Juancho from Denver. Correction, Juancho from Denver. Probably sitting right next to James from Denver. I just had a question. I know... Uh, your girl is Puerto Rican, and I want to know when the CD. Okay, number one, I couldn't really hear the question in its entirety. But as the question was being answered by Wancho, I'm taking a stab in the dark here. James from Denver is on the other side of the room, and you hear somebody scream, they broke up. That's just a wild guess. I don't know, I'm a wild guy. 
I would love to hear the question, but you heard it right. If I heard it right, let's play it. I submit this for the jury. I just had a question. I know uh, your girl is Puerto Rican. I want to know when the CD. One last zoom in for a bird's eye view. Stand by. Well, after thorough and a complete investigation, the uh, results are inconclusive. However, I am a gambling man and a rascal. And I would say that, yes, I just don't know what the guy was asking. I was trying to hear it and it sounded weird. But yes, we did break up about five years ago and she's happily remarried now you to some dude. Notified. I wish her well. You have been officially notified. Thank you. Hey, man, it's Papa Cat. You can be dazzle your dick fingers in ya. Translated, my fingers are in you. Happy fucking Thanksgiving. Thank you, Papa Cap. I don't know if I played that call on the last episode, but I don't think so because it's making me. It it, it, it grabbed me. <laughs> I would have known about this one already. Anyway, Papa Cap, thank you for calling. Thank you for that explanation. And hey, man, that sounded kind of nasty, but I'm going to keep that one. I love it. As always, soulbrotherkevin.com. I really appreciate your support. You can support via Venmo, PayPal, or Cash App at soulbrotherkevin.com. I'll be back next week. Stay safe, stay you, and stay away from Amarion. Finals. SBK!